Uh, good evening. I'd like to call our meeting to order. We'll start with the call to the order. Uh, again, Matt Jermaine is Matt, Matt just walked in. So Matt, you can come in here if you want. If you want to sit over. Uh, I'll let Matt get he's just uh, walking up to his chair. Shall we go around and see where we're where we're at? We're gonna start with the pledge. Yeah, I'll, I'll just he's just sitting down. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll have the clerk please call the roll. I am Clerk Chovu. I am attending remotely from Heartland Township. Supervisor Fountain. Uh, Supervisor Bill Fountain. Uh, I am in Heartland Township as well. Treasurer Horning. Treasurer Horning uh, in Heartland Township. Uh, Trustee Germain. We'll come back. He, yeah, he said. I had, he he doesn't have his computer on yet, but he said he's here. Okay. And he's, he's about 15 feet from me. Okay, from Heartland Township. Uh, Trustee McMullen. Here, uh, attending remotely from Heartland. Trustee O'Connell. Denise O'Connell, attending remotely from Township. Trustee Petrucci. I am Joe Petrucci. I'm from uh, I'm in Heartland. Uh, oh, no. Say Heartland Town. And that's it. All present. Thank you. Uh, item number four is approval of our consent agenda. So moved. Support. Motion by Treasurer Warning, second by Trustee Petrucci. Any discussion? Uh, Bill, you stated that we were approving the consent agenda. Oh. I'm sorry, approving the agenda. The okay. regular agenda. Sorry about that. I still that correct. So do I. Any discussion? And I think what we'll do tonight, uh, when we say I'll, I just raise your hand and I can just see everybody's hand. So all those papers, guy. Aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Anybody call the public this evening? Don't see anybody call to the public. We'll move on to item number six, which is approval of our consent agenda. I'll move. I'll move. Support. A motion by Trustee Petrucci, second by Dale Connell. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carried. Uh, item number seven is the only business we have this evening is the 2021 poverty exemption guidelines for the Board of Review. I've asked our Professor Jim has to join us this evening to explain this. So, uh, Jim, you have the floor. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Fountain. Um, as a reminder, uh, we are required annually to approve the uh, poverty exemption guideline policy and income guides. The income uh, guideline for you are the poverty rates that are approved uh, by the federal government um, and handed down by the state tax commission. They're actually the 2020 income guidelines that are, are utilized for the 21 uh, tax year. Um, this past year, we had a new public act 253 approved at the state that made changes uh, across the state to the poverty exemption guidelines. Um, in the packet, the last page is a summary. I'm going to refer to a lot of that. And some of the uh, 
um, guidelines are actually, I think, very good for our taxpayers. Um, they are they're clarifying that what federal income guideline levels are used because some jurisdictions, uh, my understanding is, are creating their own and not using the required federal guidelines. So that is now universal across the state that you must use the federal income guidelines. You can't get any lower than those, you can go higher, but not lower. Um, also, they um, require um, us to put the policy and guidelines on our website, which we have always done. Something that has changed a lot and um, in this thing is they have removed the ability for the Board of Review to uh, approve an exemption under substantial and compelling reasons. As an example, I would utilize, um, say someone's income was approximately $11,000, um, but the uh, poverty rate was $10,000. Because of their medical bills that were overwhelming, uh, a lot of people are taking a medication they can barely afford. Sometimes we wonder how they're putting food on their table. The board was able to utilize the substantial and compelling reasons to still approve them for the exemption at 100%. That has now been removed. It is strictly income received to the home. Uh, something else that this is allowing us to do is if there was an exemption in place for either 19 or 20 to a taxpayer, we can carry that forward because of the pandemic for the 21 year only with passing this resolution tonight. Um, the state has allowed us, and I am not recommending, to approve exemptions for three years. I don't think that's reasonable. I reached out to all of my peers, the county and outside of our county, and I don't know of any jurisdictions that's allowing poverty exemptions to go for three years straight. There's too many things that can happen. Uh, obviously, everybody's heard of lottery, that type of stuff. So it's just not reasonable to exempt somebody for three years in a row. Uh, but that doesn't uh, stop anybody from coming in on an annual basis and applying for the exemption at any one of our three board review meetings, March, July, or December. Actually, this past December, our board was kind of shocked that nobody came forward uh, at that meeting looking for a poverty exemption. But I think many of the uh, reasons the state has done this change is because of what we've been going through. They've uh, basically sent a lot of people home, closed businesses, that type of stuff. So people's income has been drastically reduced. So now if somebody comes forward and they can prove that they've, they've only got so much income and it meets the poverty guidelines for how many people they have in the home, they can be exempt from property taxes. It does not affect any special assessments they have on their property uh, because there are special service that doesn't affect those, they're still required to pay those. But from property taxes, we can now exempt them at either 100%, uh, 50%, or 25%. That's, uh, that was another change. We can't deviate from those numbers. Before, we could do some calculation and still have somebody pay uh, 60% or something like that of the property taxes. That's no longer allowed either. And these changes were made universal. I've heard of things going on across the state in some jurisdictions, but so they're making it a, I'll say a level playing field. And now instead of creating our own application, there is a state uh, application universal for everybody that we have to now use. That's about it in a nutshell. I don't know if anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. So our policy will then be allowing for a tax exempt person in 2008 or 2019 and 2020 carry over to 2021, but we will not do the the 21 carrying over to 23, the three year thing. That is correct. That's what I'm recommending. Okay. We do have two taxpayers that would qualify under that uh, process. And, and in the I, and in the the law itself, I thought there was like an audit process that you had to set up for that. Is that only relating to the three year period? Um, I'm, not I mean, clear, I'm not clear on what year it actually refers to. They do require an audit to be set up. It, they also predict that they will be the ones creating the open guidelines, which they have not done yet. Okay. 
Jim, I have a question. Can you explain again what you mean by the Board of Review extending the exemption for 2021 to applicants that meet the requirements? Yes, on the uh, uh, summary, it kind of refers to that uh, the local units can carry a poverty exemption forward to anyone who had the exemption granted in either 2019 or 20 by filling out one form they have filled out now called confirmation as long as they are still receiving just uh, their um, public assistance for income, uh, social security, social security disability income or a retirement income that's only uh, that meets the poverty guidelines may only be adjusted by inflation, uh, we can then grant them just the a year by passing this resolution. If we do not pass this resolution, we are not allowed to do that. So as another example, because of the pandemic um, last year, two of our um, were very poor. So we chose last year to go to their home so they would not have to come into the township hall. So Supervisor Fountain, Clerk Shofo and myself went to their homes, um, collected the application from them. We were able to notarize the application in their presence and came back. And Mr. Fountain, Supervisor Fountain, uh, represented them at the board uh, for their exemption appearance. Well, the state has recognized so many uh, jurisdictions doing that. We have allowed this carryover process to occur as long as the resolution was passed and they fill out the affirmation document that. Their income hasn't changed except for inflation from the prior year. Hey, thank you. Welcome. Anybody else here sound like a speech? Uh, anything else for uh, Jim? This evening uh, doesn't look like there's anything else. Jim, thank you so much for, uh, for being here. I'll add to that for the resolution. Hey Matt, you're on mute. I don't know if you can hear us. Uh, okay, I will, I will move to approve the resolution adopting the 2021 property exemption guidelines and policy. Also to allow the Board of Review to extend the exemption for 2021 to applicants that meet the requirements as noted in Public Act 253 of 2020. Support. I had a motion by a clerk show food and a second by Trustee Jermaine. Is there any other discussion? Being none, I'll have to please call the roll. Trustee Petrucci. Yes. Uh, Treasurer Horning. Trustee McMullen. Trustee Germain. Yes. Supervisor Fountain? Yes. Clerk Chofu is yes. And Trustee O'Connell? Yes. Yeah. Motion passes. Thanks again, Jim, for coming on tonight. Uh, Next is board reports. We'll start this evening with uh, Treasurer Horning. Board reports, Treasurer Horning. Uh, nothing. We'll move on to Trustee Germain. I would just like to report that we had a recent meeting of the Teen Center Board, and the board is requesting that we proceed with getting the furnace installed at the greenhouse that was constructed about a year ago. And in addition to the furnace, we'd also be running a water line. Both of these utilities would be drawn off of the 
building that's there. And this was anticipated when the grant was received to purchase that uh, greenhouse. And so um, working with the former DPW director, now our, our uh, township manager, we placed the, the greenhouse in a location that would minimize the connection cost for those uh, utilities. So this would be an expense that would be borne by the uh, teen center, but I just wanted the rest of the board to know what's proposed for the, the building where they're on Heartland Road that used to be our old township hall. Thank you, Pat. Uh, Trustee McMullen. No report. I'm, thank you. I tried to turn my volume down so I wouldn't get the echo, but I don't know if that made any difference or not. So uh, thank you, uh, Trustee O'Connell. No report. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Petrucci. No report. Trustee or Clerk Shofu. No report. And I have a report this evening. Uh, there's nothing else for a regular meeting. Let's go into our information and discussion. Uh, we'll start with the manager's report. Bob. Thank you. Just a couple quick updates. I uh, want to give everybody uh, some information that the water main extension project is down on the street for contractors to bid on. Uh, that is being handled and facilitated by HRC. Uh, it will most likely be out for about four to five weeks. Um, this has to be submitted to Hartman Township Clerk, so Larry will stamp them. We will have a bid opening on the day that they're on their due date. So stay tuned for that. We'll have a better, uh, a more precise talk uh, once we get the real numbers. Uh, moving on, the Livingston County Support Emergency Operations Plan is due for renewal. Um, I just collected signatures this week uh, that goes back to the county and then we'll come back to our township board at the next meeting for approval. Uh, that is due to re be renewed every four years and the last time it was done was four years ago. So stay tuned for that coming forward. Uh, that's basically just a list of our contacts and hierarchy in the event that there's an emergency who handles what. Um, think of it as more of a directory as to who the county would contact within the township in the event of an emergency. Uh, additionally, uh, the good news, I secured, I was able to secure a seat on the Livingston County Board of Public Works. Uh, that's been a long time coming. Heartland Township has been seeking a seat on that board for many years. And uh, so that's good news. And uh, hopefully we'll have some oversight into the county project primarily the ones that affect Heartland County, including the Livingston Regional Sewer System. So, and just a quick update on the budget. Um, tonight, we are gonna go over the water and sewer fund. Uh, the next meeting will be a, another review of the general fund. Uh, additionally, with the CIP, so we can kind of get some potential projects out on the street if we wanna get on bidder's list for 2021. Uh, the first meeting in March would be uh, hopefully in person by then. Uh, we'll have Fire Chief uh, Adam Carroll in to review the fire budget. And then the second meeting in March would be the formal adoption of all the budgets that we have reviewed as one.